Welcome back everyone. Well today we have a 2485 which is uh, quite the beast of a MacBook and this one's had a battery replacement and after the battery replacement the MagSafe light would blink on, blink off, blink off. Yeah, it, um, yeah, a bit of a, do we have a battery fault here or do we have something else at fault and I can feel the batteries flapping around. That's not a good sign. All right, well, let's get it open, have a look, and see what we can do. Okie dokie. Let's see. Everything looks average enough. At least the nice thing is I don't think you have to take the boards out for these ones. So you've got the pull strips there. What's flapping around then? Ah. It's these middle packs, they're flapping around. Why? There's like, there's no adhesive under them or something. That's weird. So they've got pull tabs on these, but not on these. That one doesn't have a pull tab either. Hmm. Well, that's not a good thing really, because what happens is when these flap around and all that, they eventually fatigue the connections a little bit. Trying to think. Let's see if USB C gives us anything interesting. 20 volts. Reset. 20 volts. Reset. We're, we're resetting only at about 1.4. That's interesting, and now we're holding. Let's see if this steps up. Let's see if this ramps up okay. So it looks like it's trying to get started and then it just crashes out. Okay, so that's MagSafe. Oh, sorry, that's USB-C. We'll try genuine Apple MagSafe now. The current is just haywire. Okay, so we've settled down to 400, 300. Well, we're going the wrong direction. Ah, this one's a weird one. We'll have a look at what's being done with the battery. I see the screws are chewed out. That's not good. It could be that it's just an incompatible battery. Though what bothers me here is that there's some lifting up of the adhesive here. That doesn't should normally happen. But there's no reason to touch any of that. So what did they do? Uh, they, uh, I see what they've done. Right, they have torn away this flex a little bit from the board. Although it doesn't look like it should be enough. But yeah, for some reason they pulled up that and I don't really know why. Because even if this one was disconnected, yeah, that whole set there, single group. So if we look at this board, let's see, what have we got? NC, bat, ground, ground. So yeah, that's, even though it is messed up a little bit, we basically just have the battery and ground and nothing else. The actual signal lines come in on the flex. So we'll test these, see what they look like. Five, yep. Mm, five, nine, one, two, and. Alright, uh, that's five, seven, three, eight, versus five, nine. Doesn't seem like a huge difference, but that. Yeah, we'll see how we go. And the last one here, 5.3. Okay, that's about right. Basically because these are clock and data, so you'd expect them to be pretty close. Although the diet mode, interestingly enough, does show there is a little bit of a difference between the two of them. Let's see if this runs perfectly fine with MagSafe 3 only. Okay, what you can hear there is a bit of a problem. I'm just not sure whether the fans are running because of the battery is missing or there's another issue that we've missed hmm yeah there's a little that should actually be able to run off magsafe 3. oh we're going to take the board out and have a look we've got a bit of a bend on this connector here you can see it in the reflection it's kind of 
unexpected. No real dust or anything down here. Alright, I can immediately see there's some corrosion down here by the base of the CPU area. It's not unusual. Let's have a closer look and see what we're dealing with. Alright, yeah, that's, that's some well and truly advanced corrosion going on there. Put a little pink dot there to let me know that I spotted something there. And we're going to have a look at the rest of the board. Because if there's that one, then there's possibly more. It does look like a bug event. Uh, it looks like that's probably the only one. So we'll get this CPU barrier removed and then we'll have a look. We don't need a lot of heat to get this up. But I want to try not... I want to try not mess it up too much. Okay. So I wonder what that part does. Let's have a look under the board viewing schematic. So there's UD102. And lo and behold, it's part of the charging system. Alright, so it looks like it's a basically a level shifter. Over here, we can see we've got 1.2 volts. And over here, we see we're talking with 1.8 volts. So basically, it's just a translation circuit that allows lower voltage signals to communicate with higher voltage signals back and forth. Let's see where we can find these things. Okay, frustratingly, we've got a situation where it's all just modern boards, like 2098, 2443, 2773, 2100. This here could have been the closest one. That's for an, uh, the new model M2 chip in a 2337 body. 2100 is this board. 2382, I don't have any of those. So, yeah, we've got a problem here where we just don't have this part. Uh, we've got this H1 marking here. Now we'll get our 2016. Okay, so there are definitely different markings on the chips. Now it could be a few reasons for that, but it's enough for me to not want to transfer the parts. Realistically, I'd be very surprised if there was a difference, but I just don't want to risk it on this machine. One of those things where <laughs> If you get it wrong, it's going to be very wrong. Let's dry brush that away. It looks like we're not going to have a... It's pretty crusty. Now, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get it off at this area. It's quite a, quite a heat sink area. To give it a little bit of a hand, I'm going to drop a tiny amount of flux if I can help it. Alright, those adhesive pads don't appreciate that, so we'll just take them off. We can put them back later. Alright, let's try that again. Uh, that's what I was hoping not to really see. So the problem is that the corrosion is actually eaten into the board. So whatever it was, it wicked very nicely underneath the chip and started taking out the pads. Uh, we'll clean that up. Fingers crossed we might have some success still. It's going to be a little bit hot for a bit. Uh, it's been sitting there and chewing for a bit by the looks of it. This resistor down here, you can actually see that there's a bit of corrosion under the pads here. I'm going to have to make a choice about that. This resistor here is half on. It's one of our 3K3 pull-ups. So this here is a 3 volt rail pulling up the signal. Um, so yeah, I think I might remove that. See how it goes when I do the resoldering rework in this area. Unfortunately, I have to add a bit more flux. And then we're going to come in with a soldering iron and a bunch of solder to try and clean up this area. 
Yeah, see how the resistor just basically came off dead easy. I didn't even have to try to get that off. It just willingly let go. So that's what I was talking about, being a concern of it. It's a good thing we found that. Because we could have replaced the chip. We thought everything was okay. And then a few weeks later it would have let go. Or even worse, it might have kept holding on but the resistance would have changed sufficiently to create some very bizarre effects a bad signaling bad protocol timings things like that and it would have actually been quite difficult to diagnose I do wonder whether this could explain that difference in the uh, data lines that I saw when I was testing Fortunately, the pads are still there, so that's a blessing. Again, a little bit of flux. Once more, hit it with some solder. And once more, clean it up. A few days later. So I managed to get myself a iCloud locked mainboard from eBay for this machine. Very fortunate. It just happened to be there at the right time at the right price. And I'd also like to thank Pedro for sending through a couple of the parts that we need. He took them off one of his boards because there's about six or seven of these particular chips on each board. So thank you again, Pedro. The nice thing is because Pedro has given me these, it means I don't have to touch this board, which means I can now use this for diode mode measurements and things like that, which means we can have some better data on open board data. Anyway. Let's get to it, get this replaced, and hopefully the machine works fine. Interestingly, these ones have the VD mark on them. And these are H1 marked. Okay. Well, that's it. it could have been that I would have been able to replace them with the ones I could get from other boards, but I just didn't want to take that risk. It'd be interesting to see which ones Pedro has. Okay, these are also VDs. Interesting. Okay, these have actually had the pad ripped off, I think. Alright, so this one's more intact, so we're going to use this one. Yeah, they're, they're a particularly difficult chip to remove simply because of the position next to the CPU. Uh, those pads, uh, actually, that back one there. Just got to fluff them up a little bit. Okay, they're fluffed. It's preheating this whole area. This is only at 270, so it's very low. Remember, we do have to put that resistor back too. And that is down. I should have had the resistor ready. Run 3K3 resistor. And that's done. Very good. Yeah, I think we'll just have to accept that as it is. Fingers crossed things go well. Lovely.
Okay, day. Here goes with the testing. Let's hope that the correlation between the battery issues and that level shifter are actually related to each other. Mag safe in. 20 volts. We want to see that charge rate go up. Looking good, but the fans are still spinning a bit fast, so may not have properly fixed it. Oh, it's interesting, the fan actually settled down now. Hmm. This charge rate still is not picking up though, unless that pack is fully charged. I doubt it. No, it is not. It's indicating. Oh, there we go. Bit of patience. Oh, had me panicking there. First, the fan won't stop spinning for a bit, and then we're not getting our proper charge rate. And now, here we are 4.6 amps. That's flat out. And we've still got a screen on. How is it drawing that much power from that pack? 5 amps, 20 volts. That's 100 watts. That pack's. Well. Oh uh, no, that, that pretty much is full 96 watts coming out. 4.6 times 19.7. Hooey, that was a fun one. Uh, I mean, it wasn't an overly complicated job, but it was still a fun one. It was nice to have that correlation or causation, I should rather say, between where we found that little bit of corrosion just down below the CPU on the bottom and the fact that the battery wasn't being properly detected and charged. Very happy about that. And of course, we did have to spend a fair bit of money to get ourselves a donor board. And again, thank you very much to Pedro for sending through those little components, and which means now we can use that donor board to populate all the diode mode values and things like that to help other people out there with the open board data system. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Till then, you'll take care. I'll catch you later. <laughs>